Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We are still in Chapter 2. We're still talking about matter. And today, in this video, we're going to talk about some of the properties of matter. So we're going to start with physical properties. What is a physical property? A physical property is any quality or condition of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the substance's composition. So by physical properties, what do I mean? Some examples of physical properties would be the melting point. You can melt an ice cube and you can refreeze the ice cube. So melting point is something that is physical. Boiling point, again, when I put a pot of water on the stove and I boil it, it goes from being a liquid to being a gas, but it's still water. Density. I can measure the density of a substance without changing it. Color. I can observe something is red or blue, and by observing that color, I'm not changing the substance. Solubility. I can take some salt and put it into a glass of water and stir it. I can separate those back out again and get my water and salt separately. So when something dissolves in water, you're just observing a physical process, something dissolving. An odor. I can notice the odor of a chocolate cake and smell it and say, oh, that smells like chocolate. And again, observing that does not change it from what it is, the substance, chocolate and hardness. I can bang on the surface of a desk and see how hard it is. I can measure that hardness, but again, it's a physical property. I'm not changing what the substance is. So physical changes are changes that alter a material without changing its composition. And again, some examples would be cutting a piece of paper in half. It's still paper, both sides grinding up a block of salt into a fine powder, again, physical change, bending a piece of copper wire, it's still a copper wire, I haven't changed its composition. So all of these things are physical changes, melting and freezing, again, if we think about water freezing and melting, or boiling and condensing, those are changes of state, so they're physical changes there's no composition change. So for physical changes, how do you know whether or not something should be classified as a physical property? You ask yourself the question, is it still the same substance? If the answer is yes, then it's a physical property. So an example is ice melting. It's still water. I'm confident when I take some ice cubes and put them into my lemonade that they're going to melt and it'll dilute my lemonade a little bit, but it's still water. It would not be okay if ice melted and turned into, say, acetone, nail polish remover. That would not be okay. So I know that ice melting is a physical change and I know that it's just going to go from solid water to liquid water, so it's cool. So later on in this chapter, we'll talk about what's the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. But for now, just grasping the concept that the gold standard for determining a physical property is asking yourself the question, is it still the same substance? And if the answer is yes, it's a physical property. So then we can talk about things like pure or mixtures. So are the following pure substances or mixtures? Lemonade, ice, and table salt. So lemonade is a mixture. It's lemon juice and water. Ice is a pure substance. It's solid water. And table salt is a pure substance. That's pure sodium chloride. So what is a mixture? A mixture is a physical blend of two or more substances. And there are two kinds of mixtures. Heterogeneous mixtures, which means hetero, that they're not uniform in composition, and 
homogeneous mixtures. They're completely uniform in composition. And homogeneous mixtures in chemistry are given a special name. They're called a solution. It's the special name that we give to homogeneous mixtures. So in order to talk more about mixtures, we have to talk about phases. Any part of a system that is uniform in composition is called a phase. A homogeneous mixture or solution has just one phase. Something with two or more phases is heterogeneous. So let's think about that for a minute. If I gave you a glass that had what appeared to be just water in it, and I said to you, it's not pure water, it's a mixture. It's either salt water or sugar water. Looking at it, could you tell whether it was salt water or sugar water? No, because it's completely homogeneous. You can't see where the salt is or the water ends. You can't see whether it's sugar or salt. So again, a homogeneous mixture has only one phase. Whereas if I gave you salad dressing and shook it up and then left it on the counter sitting, eventually you would see an oil phase and a water phase and you would know that it was heterogeneous because there's two phases. There would be the water phase and the oil phase. So solutions, again, only one phase. Solutions form in all three states. You can have gaseous solutions and our air is an example of that. Air can also act as a solvent as liquids evaporate, so we could have water vapor in there as well. So our air is a solution and it contains oxygen and nitrogen and to smaller extents hydrogen and a little helium and a little carbon monoxide, a little carbon dioxide, a little argon, a little this, a little that. So air is a solution. Liquid solutions Examples would be soft drinks, and many other examples exist in your everyday life, but soft drinks are a good example of a solution. And solid solutions, we think about metal alloys. So whether we're talking about bronze or um, brass, those are all examples of solid solutions, metal and metal solutions. So suspensions are heterogeneous mixtures in which the particles are so large that they can be seen and they actually will settle out unless the mixture is stirred or agitated. So my um, example for a heterogeneous mixture to get this point across is muddy water. If I take a scoop of dirt and dump it into a big old bottle of water and stir it around, it will stay sort of suspended until I stop stirring it and then what happens is all of the particles will fall to the bottom. Some of the smaller ones will actually stay suspended. So a heterogeneous mixture where the particles are so large that they can be seen and that they settle unless you keep stirring it, agitating means stirring, those are classified as suspensions. So with mixtures, the way they are classified is determined by the particle size. So if the particles are extremely small, and we're talking about 10 to the minus 9 meters, it actually will be called a solution because the mixing takes place at a molecular level. If the particles are larger, the larger size results in something called the suspension because again the particles are so large that they fall out. And we'll learn that there's also another category called colloids. And later on this year we'll actually spend, if you could believe this, two whole chapters just talking about solutions and aqueous solutions. For now we'll just know that there are generally homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So now let's talk about what you do with these mixtures. How about if you want to separate them? So we talked briefly about separations and chemical reactions. So the separation process um, that we use, if you make something or you have something and it's a mixture and you want to separate it out, there's two common processes that we use. 
distillation, and this is um, something that we use the difference in boiling points of two liquids to separate them. And then chromatography is another way that you can separate out particles um, in a mixture. So distillation, here's a picture of it. And what I have here is a, uh, a solution right here in this um, round bottom flask. So this might be a mixture of benzene and alcohol. And they have very different boiling points. And I could use a heat source and monitor the temperature. And the lower boiling substance will come across first. And I would collect it and then the temperature would start to rise and then the higher boiling substance would come across. So uh, distillation is a method that's often used to separate liquid-liquid uh, mixtures, solutions. And we'll learn more about this in the chapter about solutions. And I have one more picture of a distillation here with an actual flask. And this is what it would actually look like if we were in class and I could um, could show you. And you'll see here that the color of the solution is different than the pure substance that comes across on the other side. And so there's one more thing that we'll talk about with separations, and that is chromatography. So chromatography is another process of separating mixtures, and there are many different types of chromatography. Um, there are gas, liquid, affinity, and thin layer chromatography. And last year in bio class, you might have done thin layer chromatography where you'll take a plant pigment and you'll dot it on a piece of paper. And then you'll put it into um, a dish of a solvent. And what will actually happen is it will climb up the paper. And you'll see separate dots forming as the mixture separates according to the size of the particles. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.